Amen. Again, thank you. And uh, if you would, turn your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. And uh, as you're turning there, let me, I meant to announce this. Uh, young people, you need to help me do a favor. You need to do me a favor. Help me out with something. If you play ping pong down there, make sure you put the paddles back, pick all the balls up. And uh, we have limited the balls this week. Uh, I think my wife and I picked up 20-some balls yesterday laying all over the fellowship hall. We don't need that many. Uh, I may need it if I'm playing, but we truly don't need that many. Just pick the paddles and everything up and put them in the container when you're done if you'd help with that. And then if you have to leave the auditorium, uh, we haven't put a sign on it, but if you take the side door, if the, when these doors, the, the double doors, when they shut, they, uh, the, the, the uh, camera will shake. Um, not that that's a huge deal, because I don't watch the live stream, uh, but maybe it would for them, and, and of course noise as well. Deuteronomy chapter number 8, and uh, looking at a passage of Scripture, of course we know this is Memorial Day weekend. A day where we remember tomorrow many people will visit uh, cemeteries, whether it's to put flowers on a grave or flags, of course, or on the graves to, uh, to just remember a loved one who may have served in the armed forces, served, or uh, just a loved one who has passed away, and you're going to go by and visit the grave tomorrow. And uh, you remember all of the great things that uh, ha ha have taken place or the memories you had with that person and, of course, our great nation here. In setting, uh, thinking about a message to preach, uh, thinking about Deuteronomy here, and uh, Moses is, in, where we're going to pick up, we're picking up halfway through a, a, a message as he is preaching or, or, or talking to the children of Israel just before they go into the promised land of Canaan. They're in Mo, uh, the, the, the desert of Moab here and uh, uh, just across the river, the Jordan River. And he is uh, declaring to them some wonderful things that have happened, uh, wonderful things that are taking place, and then some warnings of the future. And I believe much of the same thing can be true here in America. You know, it's, it, it's saddening uh, to say, I remember the good old days. I remember when our nation was great. Boy, it's hard to watch TV, read the news, and stomach what is going on. It's absolutely sickening. And uh, we say, well, we have a bunch of idiots, and I know that's not a word that we should use, young people, that we have a bunch of idiots running our country. The fact is, is we don't. We have some evil people running our country, trying to destroy our nation. I'll talk about it. I don't want to jump ahead, but if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, we pick up partway through and we'll look back at some of the verses. But Deuteronomy chapter 8, starting in verse 10, and Moses says, When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, put this down a little bit, and his uh, commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I have commanded thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and are full and hast built goodly houses and dwell therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And it says, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, uh, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who uh, brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not, and that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of my hand hath gotten me this wealth. 
But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, uh, which he sware unto thy fathers, as it is this day. In verse 18, the first part there, it says, remember the Lord thy God. If you have a habit of underlining, underline that phrase, remember the Lord thy God. Of course, this is Memorial Day when you remember the sacrifices that were paid for our country. You know, in Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy is, is a book of remembrance. It's a book of review. Uh, the word literally means second law. Now, this was not an addition to the law or a new law, simply reviewing and reminding us of what was there. Moses is reminding the children of Israel where you came from, what was promised you, how God took care of you in the wilderness, and what God is going to do in the future as well. But with God, every time he gives you a commandment and says that I will bless you, there's always a contingency. And we'll look at that here this morning. But in these verses, we discover the challenge and obligation of offering genuine praise to the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but we need to thank God for the country we do have. We need to take control of our country. We need to take our country back. We need to ask God to, 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 to truly intervene in our country. But uh, I still am grateful that I'm born in this country. I'm glad. Listen, I'm proud to be an American. Now, let me say, now, if this makes people mad, I don't care. I'm proud to be a white American. I hope that you're proud of your nationality. I pray that you're proud of who you are. Why? Because the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Listen, it is not a skin problem. It is a sin problem. When our president has said that an executive order that if any... Did you know, did you hear this or read this on the news that all of our embassies across around the world, if they want to, they can fly the BLM flag? Under the United States flag? I don't know about you, it's blasphemy uh, to, to our country, but I don't want to get in politics because then that'll be a rabbit trail that we may not return from anytime soon. And, and uh, some of y'all, when that food starts, the smell of that food, you're going to turn me off. Uh, now someone said that, they said they did a study and they said most people have in, in their seat, they have about a 30 minute attention span. I thought they haven't interviewed our church. It's about a 10-minute attention span. And that's coming from the very back row, the very, very back wall row there. This side, Miss Julie, this side, yes, on that. But I want to look at two things here uh, this morning with, uh, with uh, several hundred uh, uh, sub points on here. But I want us to look at the abundance from our Lord. The abundance, when you look at your spiritual life, although Moses is talking to the children of Israel, he really is talking to us as well. Because when you think about what has God given to you, what have you been blessed with, not only as a nation, but spiritually, what has God blessed you with? How many of you this morning would say, I have been blessed? Man, all of us have been blessed by the Lord. I'm so glad that I serve a true and living God. I'm glad that I serve one who is not dead. He is alive. Now, we, we didn't read the first eight verses here, nine verses in our text, but they are essential to a heart of thanksgiving. In verse number nine in Deuteronomy 8, it says, A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without uh, scarceness, Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Now, our existence is much different than that of, of, of Israel, but the fact is God has blessed our nation. God has blessed the church. God has blessed the Christian. Now let me say this, God has blessed our nation because of the Christians in this nation. 
That's the only reason God has blessed. God has not blessed this nation because of, of liberal politicians or because of their supposed wisdom. God has blessed this nation because of some Christian ideals that this nation was built upon. Now, I've said this before. I always have someone will say, Pastor, that's not true. We have never, ever been a Christian nation. We were built upon Christian ideals. You say, well, why do you say that? Do you realize that Baptists were hated when this country began, uh, when our land... Do you know that they would drown Baptists? Because we believed in baptism. They brought the church over from England and, and all of that. And we won't get into all of that, but understand, we have been blessed as a nation because of the Christian, because of the church taking a stand for God. Now, in this, I want us to notice God has blessed our past. In verses 2 and two through 4 in chapter 8, it says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might uh, uh, make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Thy raiment wax not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years." Now, he's reminding them of the blessings of their past. You know, the word remember deals with those blessings of the past. When someone says, hey, do you remember this? They are not asking you about future events. They are asking you about what was spoken or what had happened in the past. He says, listen, I want you to remember where you came from and what God did with you these past 40 years. You didn't need new clothes because they didn't wear out. You didn't need shoes because they didn't wear out. You didn't need to provide yourself with food because God provided it all for you. You need to remember, people, what God did for you in the past. Folks, we need to do the same thing. We need to remember what God has done for us. We need to remember all the blessings that God did. If we were to sit down, and this isn't Thanksgiving, we do it during Thanksgiving. If you were to sit down and write all of the blessings, boy, they would be innumerable. You could not number all that God has done for you. All of the blessings, but also for this great nation. You know, would we not have to admit that God has blessed our past. Let me ask you, has God not been faithful? Boy, God's been faithful. I'm glad that we serve a faithful God, not a fearful God. We can, we, we can, we can have faith in our God that He is going to take care of us and meet our each and every need. God also is blessing our present. In verses 7 and 8 it says, the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of, oil, of olive oil and honey. You know, he said, the Lord thy God bringeth thee. At that very moment, God was bringing them out of the wilderness into the promised land. Listen, they were on the verge of going into Canaan. For 40 years, they had waited for this moment. Everybody under the age of 20 years old uh, uh, had passed away. Uh, Joshua and Caleb had passed away. And, uh, and they're on the verge of walking into the promised land that they could have taken 40 years earlier, but they had not. And Moses is saying, at this very moment, this present moment, God is blessing you. And God has blessed us in the past. But God is also blessing us in the present as well. Listen, I'm still glad we're able to come to church, open our Bibles, and worship Him. Uh, we still have freedoms. 
to uh, do and, and activities to be involved in. How many tomorrow are going to have a cookout tomorrow? How many plan on eating tomorrow? Let's just ask that. Multiple times tomorrow. Uh, uh, with it, and, and some already had a, a huge cookout uh, yesterday and more food than they can eat, and they just enjoyed it all day. Hey, that's the blessing of being in America. I'm glad that we had an overabundance and not in the teen activity, and, and I apologize for those in the planning. We will plan one here shortly again uh, for the ones who weren't able to make it, but man, the teen activity, we were planning for a huge group and didn't have it, so they had to make up for you, and they ate so many hot dogs, it was coming out of their ears. Uh, uh, with it, uh, but man, we have so many things. You can get in your vehicle and you can take a trip. Uh, you can drive around. You can even go to Fantasy Twirl and have an ice cream uh, cone, a double dip, triple dip, whatever you want. There, uh, you're ready to go right now, aren't you, Brother Dale? Let's let's hit it. <laughs> I'm ready. That was yesterday. Thanks for the invite. Uh, how many of you got the invite from him? Uh, not us. Uh, that was a past blessing. He's not giving you any present blessings there. But listen, we are presently being blessed. If you're able to, to get up in the morning and drive it, you're blessed. And God has been good. God's still good. You see, just take a moment and consider what the Lord has done for us even today. To wake up this morning, hear the birds singing. To wake up this morning, the sun shines. To wake up this morning with a little bit of frost on the ground, <laughs> on the verge of June. But it's supposed to warm up to be a beautiful day today. Every day God gives us a beautiful day. Think about what God has done for you. You know, God has been good and gracious in our lives. You know, has He not blessed us even at this very moment? You know, aren't you glad we don't have to look back with regret saying, I sure wish God would have. I'm certainly glad to say God did. But I'm also glad to say that God still is. But then also God can bless our future. In verse number 9, again, Moses is speaking here. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread. He's saying future, future. Here shortly you're going into a land. And he says thou shalt eat. Uh, uh, shalt eat, shalt eat bread without scarceness, which means there's over an abundance. Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig. Now, they had not entered the promised land, and Moses is already speaking to them of the blessings that they are going to receive. He had not brought them through the wilderness to abandon them in Canaan. God would continue to bless His people as long as they continued to serve Him. He said, listen, you're about to enter that, and I'm telling you, God's going to bless you there if you will continue to serve Him. You know, I'm grateful that we serve a God who will never leave nor forsake us. We have a blessed hope. You know, God has promised us many good things. I would like to be like Moses and say, folks, listen to me. God is going to bless our nation in the future. But that would be foolish. Because you see, that is contingent upon what we do. God has blessed our nation. God is blessing our nation, but God's hand of blessing is being removed from our nation. You see, the Bible, the same thing, the Bible says if we forget God, God is going to forget us. The Bible says righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach. Listen, our country is in a very evil, wicked, sinful path. Now that doesn't mean that God's not going to bless you and your future. When you talk about the nation of Israel, he says, listen, if you will walk with God, if you will not forget and we'll go over some of those things, God will bless you. I hope that God continues to bless our nation. But we certainly can. You know, wouldn't it be a shame those that paid the ultimate price for our freedoms to enjoy capitalism? to enjoy freedoms, to enjoy liberties, all for naught because you have some people that are power hungry. 
you know, our government says they're for the little person. They're not for the little person. They're for themselves, always have been. They want to fill their coffers. We better get off that rabbit trail uh, on this. Not only the abundance from our Lord, but how about the awareness? In verses 10 through 17, Moses deals with two aspects of our awareness. First of all, the duty of praise. Moses reminds the people of their duty and obligation to praise the Lord. You know, he also reminds them of that which they need to praise God for. Once again, uh, there is a great application for us as well. What did Israel, as well as our, our church, have to praise God for? What do we have to praise God for? What did they have to praise God for? Well, if you look at verse number 10, the Bible says, When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. The first part, when thou hast eaten and art full. You know, you look at, our satisfaction. He says, after they had eaten and were full, they were to praise the Lord for their fullness. All that God is going to give you, don't forget to thank Him. Don't forget to praise Him because it is Him that ought to get the honor. It is Him that ought to get the praise. Not you, but God. Folks, the same thing is true. We need to thank God for everything He has given to us. We are so blessed. God has blessed them and satisfied their need. Oh, how we need to praise God for our satisfaction. How many times do we go to the table and get full on God's promises? How many times has God forsaken you when you have went to him and said, Lord, we have this, uh, this prayer request. We have this need. You must answer this need. God has never forsaken us. No, God may not have answered it yet, but God's going to. When we ask God, we're to thank him for answering. Pray, Lord, will you please answer this prayer? Thank you for answering this prayer. You know, we serve a wonderful God. You know, how many of our urgent needs has God failed to supply? We would have to admit that we are blessed beyond measure. We are blessed more than we ought to be. Even as Christians, we are blessed beyond what we should be. How many times do we forsake the Lord, but God never forsakes us? Not only our satisfaction, our source. Moses reminds Israel and all who read these words, the source of our blessings. It says in the last part of verse 10, Then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God. For the good land which he hath given thee. We are to praise him from whom all blessings flow. God is the provider of all the goodness that we receive. You know, how many have a job that you supply for the needs for your family? How many have a car that you're able to get around in? How many have a roof over your head? God is the one that has blessed you with that. You know, someone posted... Uh, on Facebook, um, what, did your, what did your father and mother's job give you? Man, a roof over our house, uh, our heads, food on our tables, a, a work ethic. That's what my parents gave me. They gave me a great upbringing. You know, in this, do you have all that God has given us? Listen, if you have money in the bank, food on the table, clothes in your closet, God's given you that. God's so good to us. Our salvation. Look at verse 14. It says, then, uh, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God. In the last part, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You know, Moses spoke of the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. He reminds them of the bondage that they were under and the deliverance they'd received. Remember that when they left Egypt, they were in bondage there. In fact, uh, the, 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 the Pharaoh said, take away uh, the straw, take away the sticks, let them go get their own materials to build bricks, bricks of clay, but, 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 but be harder on them. And the taskmasters were hard on the children of Israel. They were in bondage. I remember a time when I was in bondage. 
bondage to sin. And it had my soul, it had my life, and June the 8th, I gave my heart and life to God. And God freed me from that bondage. You know, it is impossible. Do you know this? It is impossible to truly praise the Lord without remembering your salvation. Impossible. When you think about praising God, the only reason we can praise Him is what He has done for us. He said, don't forget, you know, but praise the Lord. He came to me in a moment of need. You know, of all that I am thankful for, I believe the greatest thing is my salvation. There are so many things that I'm thankful for, but I'm certainly glad for my salvation. I am thankful for this nation and the blood that was paid for my freedoms. I thank the Lord that I'm able to live in a blessed country. And then you look at our security, Moses says, in verses 15 and 16, who led thee through the great Uh, that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good, all uh, good at thy latter end. Now Moses reminds them of the wonderful protection and provision that God had given them. It wasn't them that had given it. It was God that protected them. Now understand when they left Egypt, it wasn't free sailing. They had some battles that they had to fight. They had some foes that they had to face. But God's the one that provided the victory. He said, don't forget about the security that God has provided for you. God fought their battles. God fed their families. God favored them and led them in the way. I don't know about you, but I'm certainly glad that I have the security that the Lord has given me. You say, what security? If I died today, I know for sure I'm in heaven. I never have to fear of going to a place called hell. How many are you glad for that? You know, I heard... Uh, someone recently say, well, isn't there a provision that can be made where we can buy or purchase our way to heaven? Well, that's a Catholic term of purgatory and, and you can give money and monetary to skip a certain amount of, of, of uh, uh, torment that you will face. Listen, why would God send His Son to die on the cross and shed His blood for us to offer salvation freely to allow you to go to a hell for a period of time to pay for your sins. That doesn't make sense. It's not biblical either. Why? Because the Bible says our sins were placed upon Christ at the cross. He paid it all. Aren't you glad that you're saved today? Aren't you glad that you're on your way to heaven today? We serve a wonderful Wonderful God. Man, we are blessed. We are blessed. I know that I'm secure in Him. I, you know, we have, we, heaven is as sure in the future as it is today for us. Your home is secure. How many of you ever had to get an apartment? How many of you ever had to put your name in and put, put on a waiting list? for an apartment or for a house or for anything. Aren't you glad there's no waiting list with God? It's already there. It is already prepared for us. You know, David declared that he had never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. You know, we may never have all that we want, but God will provide what we do need. Then you see the danger of our pride, though. He says, now I want to remind you the duty of praise, but I also want to remind you, you need to be careful that pride does not get in the way. You see the pride, the danger of pride. They had not yet entered the promised land and Moses was already warning them. You're going to go and you're going to get a lot of blessings, but remember who gave them to you. 
Remember where they came from. He talks about the danger here. Notice what God's word reveals to us concerning pride. In verse number 11 it says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Do you know that pride promotes disobedience? Moses warned that pride would cause the people to forget the commandments of God, that it would uh, cause them to forget the blessings of God. It would cause them to stray from Him, and it would hinder their relationship with God. Pride will generate the same response in our life as well. Boy, look what we have done. Take a look at our nation. You know, do you know why we are in the condition that we are in today? Because history is not being taught properly in our schools. We have forgotten where we came from. You know, all of these people that are pushing for socialism, but it's a different socialism. It's a different type. It's not the same as you are teaching you know, you can take a, a, a plug and you can strip a cord and you can have the wire sticking out. And if it doesn't, you know, I know that a plug has a big end, small end, and you can put it in there, but many of them have the same size. Do you know that you can hold on to those wires? It doesn't matter which way, upside down or right side up. You put it in there and hold those wires, you're going to get shocked. It's still producing the same you know, these people, if they don't like our country, we ought to just send them to a communist nation to enjoy for a while. That's what we ought to do. If you don't like it here, I love it. It would just do us better. More food for us. More air for us. If you don't like it here, leave. Why? Because they've not been taught the blessings that our nation has wrought. He said, you need to be careful. You go into that land and you start getting all of the blessings that God's been given to you. Don't forget Him. Pride will do, cause us to forget a holy God. It promotes disobedience. But pride also promotes arrogance. Look at verse 17. It says, And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of my hand hath gotten me this wealth. Moses warns of the dangers associated with this arrogant, prideful attitude. He has already reminded them that it was God who cared for them in the wilderness and it would be God that would give them the land of plenty. He knew that they would be tempted to assume that everything they have is because of them. Do you know why we have this great nation? Because of the leaders in politics in their wonderful decisions. No, we don't have this wonderful nation because of Washington, D.C. We have this wonderful nation because of the people and the hard work. Yes, you need leadership, not the leadership we have in. We need to, you know, I know we're a uh, period out, but listen, we need to do it as right as Christians. And I, I'm not going to say what's on my mind right now. I will at some time. And there is a difference between a conservative and a liberal. There's a difference between a Democrat and a Republican and a constitutionalist. There is a difference. There's a difference between a Democrat and a lot of things. We just need to know, this is one of those rabbit trails, medicine does wonderful things. Uh, uh, there are so many things. This great nation, folks, we need to do what is right. We need to vote. We need to participate, but we need to take this country back. You say, well, it can't be done. That's because you serve a small God. I serve a big God. A God that can take nothing and make everything is a God that can still. But the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, they say, oh, no, no, thou was the children of Israel. No, because if you read that whole passage of Scripture in Second Chronicles, it says, if the stranger were to pray that prayer, will you hear him? And God said, yes were a stranger. I still believe God can bring a revival, but people are the ones that have to do it. 
Let us never forget what our country has given us. Never let us forget the blessings of our nation that we have today. But let us never forget the blessings that God has given us, even in a church like this. Folks, I, don't, I really don't think that we as, as Americans truly um, appreciate all the freedoms that God has given us. Do you know there's, think about Taiwan right now and what's happening there. Think about China, the underground churches there. Think about Christians in North Korea. You know, we all love my daughter and she's from South Korea and you look just across the border. Do you know there's Christians in North Korea? But they are worshiping in private and if they get found out, they will be executed. How many are you glad you didn't have to look around your shoulder? Why are you going to, the, to, to that building? Well, it's just a supermarket. We just have a few items in here or just some friends meeting. We do have a supermarket. We get to glean off the blessings of God. We get to come as family and friends. We, listen, we not only get to feast on the Word of God today, we get to feast on what God is going to give us. I mean, this is a, this is a true Baptist potluck. We have fried chicken. And a bunch of desserts, upside down, what is it, cherry or strawberry cake? Cherry cake. We'll hit the, uh, hit the desserts first. Wait, <laughs> I do that anyway. That's true. Thanks for helping out. I agree with you. Why, why would I share with anybody else if the rapture takes place? On it, and uh, and I'm even blessed. My wife will make me a, this. This is just between Brother Dale and I right now. This is another one of those times that my wife will make me a dessert plate. That I make a dessert plate, not realizing she made one. I get two. Uh, now that I've told her, she may not do it today. But please, honey, continue, continue the good work, continue the good walk. But you know, you even take the blessings that God has given us. If we're not careful, we start taking for granted what God has given to us. Folks, we are blessed. Part of coming together as a church is to help carry each other's burdens as well. To help us to encourage one another. We are so blessed as Christians. You know, many may not want to admit it, but it was God who enabled us to prosper as we have. This nation would not be the nation it is had God not allowed us to prosper. And God not blessed us like we have been. Listen, had He not blessed us, we'd be no different than the other nation. You know, where the problem lies is that we have forgotten God. We have assumed the very attitude that Moses warned the children of Israel because they did forget God in a, in a later time. They started to think, look what I have done. Look what I have built. Look at the blessings that God. No, we haven't done anything. It's only what God has done through us. He said, don't forget God. May our nation go back to realizing, you know, we want to take the credit for our prosperity. Many assume that their hard work has brought abundance. Hard work and planning are essential, but it is God who blesses. All that we enjoy, do you realize God has given us? And I'm thankful for the church that God has given us. You know, coming up the end of the month, it'll be 19 years that God has allowed my family and I to be here to pastor this great church. And the friendships that we have built, the family that we have built, God is good. But let us never forget, this isn't my work, it's God's work. This is what God has done. Oh, we need to keep ourselves humble before a holy God. Praise Him for the abundant blessings. You know, when you think about Memorial Day and today and tomorrow and, and even yesterday, let us not forget to thank God for the wonderful nation He's given us. You know, when you... In closing this morning, is there anything in your life that you're truly thankful for? You need to praise God for it. But maybe someone here this morning does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, their personal Savior. Listen, the only way to truly praise and thank God is to accept Him as your personal Savior. If you're not saved, I pray today you nail that salvation down and thank Him for all that He's given you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You for this day. 
Lord, just, uh, just some thoughts on the message that Moses, the uh, commanding and, and, and preaching and encouraging them. Moses was not able to go into the promised land, but he was telling them all that God would do, all that he had done, all that God is doing. Let us never forget, Lord, the blessings that you have given us. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, maybe someone here this morning would say, Pastor, I do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. There's never been a day in time when I have truly, truly accepted Christ as my Savior. I pray you don't leave here today without knowing for sure. Is there one like that today? Say, Pastor, pray for me. I won't embarrass you. I won't call you down. But is there anyone like that here today? Pastor, would you pray for me? If you are thankful for something today, make sure you let God know how thankful you are. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray you be with us here in these next few moments as we bring praise to you and honor. And uh, Lord, in this invitation, if someone has, is, does not know you as their Savior, I pray you'll so convict their heart that they'll run to the platform. Then also, Lord, that we will give honor and thanks to you for all that this nation has, has given us. But let us not forget all of that can be taken away by forsaking you. Let us turn back to you, turn our eyes back to you. We pray in your precious and holy name. Amen. Let's grab our songbooks.